The remote valve operation on the tractor is the same whether we're dealing with a power shift or a CVT tractor. We do have a couple of differentials that I want to try to cover, and that is whether or not the tractor is equipped with a Pro 700 or we're going to do it without the Pro 700. So I'm going to first start off as if the tractor does not have a Pro 700 and you, the operator, are going to adjust. When you open up the armrest cover, you see the knobs that we have placed below. Incidentally, if you take this big knob, it becomes the encoder for us. So that's the knob we can use. So when I turn this knob on the ICU, I pick up the total number of remote valves that I've got. As you can see on this tractor, I've got four remote valves. So one, two, three, four. So when I deal with that, I've got four handles. Therefore, the button on the multi-control handle right here will work remote valve number one. If the tractor was equipped with four valves, five valves, if the tractor had five valves, this button would only work number five. If the tractor's got six remotes, seven or eight valves, then this button would revert back to number one. So it's going to work number one and or number five. So by turning this decoder knob, and when we turn it, we can go to any valve we want to. Let's assume we're going to adjust remote valve two. By depressing down on the button, what I get is I get the ability to adjust my flow, flow with speed on the unit, and we do this in percentages, and likewise, I can adjust my timer. So to adjust the flow, right now it's at 58%, let's say I want to take it to 70%. What I do is I depress down on the button, now I can increase and just turn the knob clockwise, and if I come up to 70%, I hit down, and my flow has been adjusted or brought up to 70%. 70% will be more flow than if I'm at a lower flow, and the reason that we use percents rather than gallons of flow or something of that nature is because we've got three different hydraulic systems on the tractor. We've got a standard flow, we've got a high flow option, or a twin flow system, and that carries through the entire line. So we use the same remote valves, etc. So what you got is 70% of the flow that's on the tractor. If we got a high flow system on a Magnum tractor, it's going to be 59 gallons or 60 gallons for, for simple layman's way. So I got 70% of 60 gallons at rated engine speed is what that remote is going to attempt to put out. We can adjust the flow on both the raise and on the lower circuit. So when the cylinder is coming down, that is the lower circuit. If we go to the other side, it would be the raise, and I can bring my flow down, and we were on number two, now I'm on number one, and I will have set this one at 60%. Okay, by depressing down, my flow is set, I can come over and I can adjust my timer. The timer is how long the pump will remain on demand when you pull the handle back. So maybe I want this to be set at uh, eight seconds. So I just merely run the decoder. Once I'm at eight seconds, I depress it. That is set. Maybe on the raise side, I need 10 seconds. So what I will do is just increase this to 10 seconds and depress it down. So now my system is set, eight seconds for lowering and 10 seconds for raising. If I bring myself over, I do have a paddle lock so I can lock that remote valve. When you lock that remote valve, that means when you pull the handle, there will be no action out of it. That would be extremely important if you're running such things as our 875 Ripper and you've got the discs set down. You don't want to raise them automatically and if somebody gets their fingers on the wrong handle, that way that valve is inoperative and when they pull back on it, you won't destroy the initial settings that you've got set up on the implement. So it gives you some flexibility in that means. So I'll unlock the valve so it's operational. And over here where we've got a check mark, if you've got an X on the unit, the timer is turned off. If I activate it so I've got a check mark, the timer is active. And I would prefer that all the tractors are working with all the timers being active. And then I've got, I can take myself back to my home position 
and that brings me right back. I can hit my buttons and I go right back to whatever I'm monitoring on the tractor. Very simple operation, very simple setup. A couple things I want to make mention of. Number one is if you pull a remote valve on demand, the handle does not go back to neutral. It was never designed to go back to neutral. The reason for it is the operator can feel with their hand and know exactly which valve they have activated. So it gives them quick reference to go back and forth. With the timers properly set, what we want to do is activate the remote valves, push the handle down or pull it rearward to raise and leave the handle there. The timer will shut itself off. Okay. Okay, we talked about adjusting the hydraulic circuit using the decoder. If the tractor is equipped with a Pro 700, it really becomes very simple. What you need to do is hit the back button, and we come back to this main screen. If you come to the main screen, we'd hit remote valves. If you hit the remote valves, what we've got, just like with the decoder, is our flow setting. So if I want to adjust, uh, let's say, remote valve number one, what I would do is come in and I can increase or I can decrease my flow or my speed on the unit. We'll set this one here at 65%. We'll go to the other side and we'll set that one maybe at 65%. There's 50. Uh, so just by tapping it, I can get it to 65% and now my flows are set. If we look, we had set ourselves for eight seconds in the Low, uh, lower circuit and 10 seconds in the raised circuit. And that's the time I got. So if I go to my timers, I can adjust these and it's just a matter of bringing it up as such. So very simple operation to set the timers on the unit. And like before, if you hit the center while you're in the timer, I've got a red X. With the X on, the timer is locked off. If I hit the button, the timer's on. There's even an easier way to adjust the timers. And let me explain. When I talk about even an easier way, you can see that anytime there's a light on in here, and if the light is underneath the clock, that means that the timer's active for each one of those remote valves. We had just adjusted the timer on remote valve one, and we've got it set for 17 and 20 seconds. Let's assume that we've hooked up to the implement. And if you've hooked up to the implement, you've adjusted your flow so you're very comfortable with the speed that the implement is raising and the implement is lowering. Now what I would suggest that you do, and I'm just gonna work with number one, I'm gonna turn off the timer. When I turn off the timer, the timer's off, I've got a red X on. Now what I would do is I will depress and hold that button until the light starts to flash. When it starts to flash, if the implement is up, I'm gonna lower it, and I just hold it until the implement's all the way down, and I bring the wheels up, and then I come back and I raise it. And I raise it until the implement's all the way up, and I drop the handle. The light will flash approximately four times, and if we look at our time, we have readjusted the time to eight seconds in the lower circuit, and five seconds in the raise circuit in this exercise. Whenever you're going to try to operate a motor operation, whether it's working on a planner, anything of that nature, especially if we have a lot of uh, centrifugal motion that's going to be on, like a fan assembly, a planner fan, or something of that nature, what we would tell you to do is just turn off the timer. And you can see I did that just by hitting the button. What we would do is come to whichever remote valve you're going to work. So I would s suggest that you always try to work your motor valves away from where your normal operation is or away from the multifunction handle. So I like to do number four. If I come into number four, what I would do is if we're working with the mechanical system, I would come in and I would back myself down on number four and dial the flow way down low. If I've got the Pro 700 on the unit, I'm gonna come into my flow on the lower side and I'm gonna decrease the flow the initial time that I hooked this tractor up to that implement so 
I don't do any damage. Even if I've messed myself up, I've got very low flow. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start the tractor and now you have to operate at whatever engine RPM is going to be the lowest that you're going to see when you're in the field. 1500, whatever that minimum is going to be, you're going to have to bring the tractor up to that speed. Lower the handle and then depress the button. When you depress the button, what you can see is the light has come on on the opposite side of the timer or underneath the motor run symbol. You're going to see a motor run position on the screen. Now take your flow and bring your flow up until you get the pressure, the vacuum, whatever it is that you are after. So just adjust yourself up so you get the speed that you are after. Once you're there, the system is great and ready to operate. Now you're completely hooked up. When you go to shut that unit off, because you got centrifugal motion, what we want you to do is place the handle into the float position, all the way forward, the normal float. Because you've got the motor run position on, what we will do is we will place the valve in the float position. And when you reactivate it, you just pull back on the handle, and now your flow once again will start, and you will start that operation. And this works very well. Now there's a reason why I would like you to operate it this way. Occasionally, we as operators get confused. And if we get ourselves confused, something is happening. Maybe I'm backing a planter up into the fence line and I get too close to the fence line or something happens. I have a tendency, instead of going into float because it's not my normal run, I may want to pull the handle back to the neutral position. If I got the motor run position, I have still placed a valve in the float position and I can restart it and no damage is done. However, maybe you really panic and you pull the handle all the way back. And if you pull the handle all the way back and if you're hooked up to the raise and lower circuit, at that point you would do damage to the orbital motor if you had centrifugal motion on the unit. If you are working in the run position, motor run position, no damage will happen because as you pull the handle back, what you will get is the unit will go back into float. Okay, if we're going to operate an orbital motor, etc., what I would first suggest that we do is turn the timer off. So you can see the light goes off. Then I would take my flow and I'm going to dial my flow the very first time that you do this, after that you don't need to do it down low. Then I'm going to take the handle and I'm going to place it in the float position and then I'm going to activate. When I do, you can see that the light comes below the, or in the opposite side or below that orbital motor system. And now my timer's on and you can see that I got an orbital motor symbol on. With that orbital motor symbol, now I can dial my flow up so that I can get the flow, the vacuum, the pressure, whatever it is that I am looking for on my implement. We don't care how much flow it takes, and you must remember to do that at the RPMs that you're going to be operating the tractor in the field. So once you've established your vacuum, your pressure, whatever it is, you're where you belong, everything will operate. Now when you go to stop the unit, what we want you to do is place it into float. Everything shuts itself off. When you get ready to reactivate it, you just pull back on it. The system is reactivated. And this works very effectively. I can shut it off, I can turn it on, and you can see that the system always starts. There are times when we as operators have a tendency to mess up. Let's assume we're backing a planter up into a fence row and we're getting too close to the trees or something and we have a normal tendency to panic and you reach over here and instead of going into the float, you pull the handle back and you go into the neutral position. The handle still takes the valve and we still place it in the float so no damage is done. So I can reactivate it, the system starts right up and everything works very effectively. And especially 
if you get into that panic situation and you pull the handle all the way back, you can see here I have no flow coming from one side to the other. So remember to operate in the lower position, operate with the light on on the motor run position. Certain implements require functions like constant hydraulic pressure, possibly in the down position, where you're trying to hold the discs or something like that with constant down force. Whenever you're doing that, typically what we'd like to do is set the flow as low as we can, as we've just described. Now to set constant down pressure, and this is the only time I ever hope to see this, and if we come up on the tractor, and I'm just going to work remote valve number one up here. So I'm going to go over to my timer, and when I deal with my timer, and I'm going to go on the lower circuit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial that flow or time all the way up. And once I get up to max flow or right over a minute, you can see this figure eight that's laying sideways on the unit. That means that that valve is in constant flow. So if you push the handle down, the pump is going to stay on demand and it's going to be pumping for you. When you get to the headland, you're going to raise the implement, the timer will take effect in the raise circuit, and when you go back into the lower circuit, the pump is going to stay on, the pump will be on demand, and you're going to have your constant down pressure on that circuit.